said, what? No, Luke chapter 17, verse 11 through 19. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was passing along between Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered a village, he was met by 10 lepers who stood at a distance. And they lifted up their voices saying, Jesus, master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said to them, go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, somebody say, as they went. As they, and as they went, they were cleansed. And then one of them, just one, one of them, when he saw that he was healed, he turned back praising God with a loud voice. And he fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. In verse 17, Jesus answers by asking a question. I love how often Jesus would answer something with a question. He answers. This guy falls at his face, giving thanks. Awesome to me how Jesus answered someone giving thanks. You don't think of that. Someone says, thank you. But like there was something in that that, that elicited an answer from Jesus. Getting ahead of myself. Jesus asked, we're not 10 cleansed. Where are the nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, rise and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. It's the word of the Lord for us today. Father, we're grateful for your word. We pray that as we sit under the teaching of your word, submit our hearts, submit our ears, that you would encourage, that you would challenge, that you would stretch, that you would remind us of things that we have already known and long forgotten, that you would teach us new things, that your word would come alive on the inside of us. In Jesus' name. Everybody said, amen. Thank you, sunshine. I'm everybody. I'm gonna have the band join me up at the end. You have caught us in a very, very, very special day in the rhythm of our church calendar. Today, especially, we are here to praise God for his blessings over this past year. Today, especially, we're here to praise God for his blessings over this last year. I pray that every single week that you come, that you show up with something to praise God for. Can you, can you imagine a room full of people who every Sunday when we showed up to glorify God, there was something on our lips and something in our heart that we weren't waiting for a lyric to elicit something from us or a feeling or an emotion or, or a piece of the text, but that we came prepared with a praise offering on our lips and something to give praise to God for. But today especially, we are here to praise God for his blessings over this past year. Today is a day of celebration. It's a day of gratitude and of thanksgiving. It's a day that we ascribe honor and glory to God for his goodness. You could be thinking, Pastor, isn't this what we're supposed to do every day? Yes, but we are especially aware of this. We ascribe honor and glory to him for his goodness, his faithfulness, his kindness, his patience, his protection. Come on, his protection and his provision. Today especially, we remind ourselves that God is with us. I said he's with you. Today especially, we remind ourselves that God is with us, that he is for us, that he has gone before us and that he is blessing us. We look back at his goodness with gratitude and we look forward to his provision with expectation. Today's a day of gratitude. Some of you, this is your very first time on a vision weekend with us. I was sharing with some of our music team and there's probably three or four of them who had never been part of a vision weekend with us. And, and so I was just trying to communicate to them that today is like, I've just been tearful in my preparation because I'm just so aware of how good and faithful God has been. Explaining to them that this day of celebration and thankfulness and joy 
is not one to skip past, but it's one to celebrate with everything inside of us. Today is a day of gratitude. You're like, oh, I knew I showed up for the Thanksgiving sermon. Today is a day of gratitude. Why gratitude? Because gratitude glorifies God, bro. Gratitude glorifies God. You know why gratitude? Because you have a testimony. You have a testimony. You have a testimony of how God preserved you. You have a testimony of how God protected. You have a testimony of how God provided. You have a testimony of how God delivered and set you free and broke things off of you that you could not break, that only the anointing could break that kind of yoke. Why gratitude? Because you got a testimony. That's why gratitude. Gratitude glorifies God. Gratitude reminds me and it tells the world of the place that God has on the throne of my heart. There's a reason that when the disciples asked Jesus to help them pray, he said, when you pray, say, our Father in heaven, holy is your name. Hallowed be your name. Why? Because we're starting in the place of God. You are holy and you are good and you are on the throne. And gratitude, first and foremost, it glorifies God. Today's a day of gratitude. Gratitude glorifies God. Gratitude testifies to his goodness. I grew up in church that we would every now and again just have testimony services. Anybody remember testimony services? It had shut them down because some people would wild out on the microphone and it wouldn't be a testimony anymore. You'd be like, whoa, calm down. Why gratitude? Because it glorifies God. Why? Because it testifies to his goodness. It's a day of gratitude. It's a day of celebration. Why gratitude? Not only does it glorify God and testify to his goodness, but gratitude builds my faith for the future. Faith is not a wish. Faith is not a hope. Faith is not a lottery ticket. Faith is responding to the word of God. That's faith. You can't have faith for something God didn't say. You can't have faith for something God didn't promise. Faith is not a vision board. Faith is not manifesting what you want. Faith is responding to the word of God. And when I testify to his goodness, gratitude, it builds my faith for the future because it reminds me that when I stepped out on what God said, he was there. Faith is not something that you can enact to get what you want. You cannot get anything by faith that God did not say. Faith is not a magic trick, but it builds my faith for the future when I'm grateful because I'm testifying to what God has done. And when God did come through, it's because he said it and I moved on his word. Gratitude builds my faith for the future. It glorifies God. It testifies to his goodness. It builds my faith for the future. What about for you? That's, that's what it does. What about what it does for you? You know what gratitude does for you? It makes you light. Some of y'all are so heavy, bro. Jesus said, come to me all, who, all you who are weary and heavy laden and I will give you rest. Learn from me. We like to quote that first one, but he continues, learn from, take on my yoke and learn from me and you will find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You know what he's saying? Live life the way I live it. It's not just come to me and tell me your problems and everything gets awesome. He says, learn from me and take on my yoke. And when I do what Jesus did, my life gets lighter. And Jesus was full of gratitude. In, in, in addition to what science tells us about what a grateful life does, the neuroscience, the chemicals that are released when you are grateful, when you live a joyful life, but regardless of all of that, there's a deeper spiritual work of gratitude and it makes you light. It makes you light. You know what else gratitude does? It makes you bright. I'm advocating for all of us to have RGF. You know what that is? Resting gratitude face. <laughs> gratitude makes you bright, man. RGF, somebody make a t-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> gratitude makes you light. 
Gratitude makes you bright. You know what else? Gratitude is fun. I'm so serious, man. Like when people are like, Pastor, how can I pray for you? Very often my, my first prayer request is, can you, remind, can you pray to the Holy Spirit, remind me to be fun? I wanna be a fun dad. I'm like, I'm, I'm taking every moment to teach. And like, can, but like, can, 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 can you just help me? Grat, gratitude, gratitude makes you fun. Makes you light, makes you bright. Please don't forget that what Jesus said about you is that you are the light of the world. He said, I am. In John chapter one, John said that about him. But then before Jesus ascends to heaven, he tells the disciples, you now are the light of the world. And in a world that is so heavy and so cynical, you know how easy it is to be cynical? That is low hanging fruit. Anybody can be cynical. But the true work of like Holy Spirit inspired gratitude we're gonna to get to how it's a work of grace. But what if that was one of the most powerful apologetics for the work of God in your life is that you lived life, you lived a life of gratitude. The Christian life is to be sure one of gratitude. I am not someone who naturally tends toward gratitude. I'm fairly melancholy. I'm fairly, I tend to like see things like, okay, what's gonna go wrong next? I'm just waiting for something to happen. So, you know, when, if you've been coming to our church for a while, I'm sure that like 90% of you go to our church because of Rayan, Isaac, that's probably true. You're still here somehow. And you're like, how is it possible that someone is that joyful and has so much gratitude? And maybe you're like, I mean, you don't tend toward gratitude. You tend toward, okay, that's awesome, but like somebody has to pay attention to the details. <laughs> Not everybody can be Mary. Somebody's gotta be Martha. Somebody's gotta make sandwiches. Somebody's gotta work around here. <laughs> Somebody's gotta be serious. <laughs> and maybe if you're a little bit like me, you tend to think of all the reasons why you can operate in gratitude later once the serious work is done. that I'm the serious one so that everybody else in my family can be happy and joyful and have gratitude, but somebody has to carry the weight. Everybody else at work can go celebrate at the party and you're the one who's like still working in the back at the Christmas party because somebody's got to get something done. That's me. And as I was reading through this text, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to ask myself questions about like, why, why does gratitude not come naturally to me? I'm wondering maybe for some of you that, that it feels like gratitude doesn't come naturally. So you hear about gratitude and you hear about RGF and you have the other one. And you think like, oh yeah, that's nice. So then when I get through this season of my life, that's very serious and I have a lot of stuff, then I, and you file a message like this away, uh, a gratitude message away for when you can be grateful, for when I have something to be grateful for. So I ask myself a question like, why is gratitude hard for me? Do I just forget? Do I just forget to be grateful? Is gratefulness hard for me? This is a question I was asking myself this week. Is gratefulness not natural to me because I'm entitled? Because why would I be grateful for something that was owed to me? Like, no, the world owes me that. People owe me that. My wife owes me that. My kids owe me that. My team owes me that. And so it's hard for me to be grateful. I'm asking myself this question. Is gratefulness not come naturally because there's some sort of entitlement in me? I'm just, I'm just I'm trying to help you wrestle through my wrestle with gratitude. Because it's Thanksgiving and we're thinking about what can I be thankful for? I'm like, I'm thankful for family and I'm thankful for my health. And that's awesome and I'm thankful for that too. But I can toss those out because I know the things to say in church when people ask, what are you grateful for? I've been like, what am I grateful for? Yeah. And it started me thinking like, man, gratitude does not just, I'm not just like a naturally grateful person. And if you are, praise God, you're awesome. Like figure out how to like bottle that up and sell it on an Instagram ad and I'll get tricked by the internet and I'll buy it. And I'll be just like you. 
If you, are naturally, if you naturally gravitate toward gratitude, thank you, thank you, thank you for being who you are because we need you. Because you elevate us and you lift us. Am I entitled? Am I, here's another question I ask myself. Am I just biased towards struggle? Is that like my identity that I'm the guy who pushes through hard stuff? And then, and then as I was, thank you for going on this little journal journey with me. I realized that to me, when I really thought about it, gratitude felt aloof. Gratitude to me seemed like it's lying and it's not aware of the hard things in life. And so I felt like when I was grateful, I wasn't acknowledging the fact that I had hard stuff in life too. And I started to resent people who are naturally grateful because I'm like, oh, it must be nice to have your life. Must be nice to have been born with the family you were born into. Must be nice to make that much money. And the Holy Spirit's like, Everybody has struggles, bro. It felt aloof. It felt passive. And then as I'm reading through this text, Jesus, he tells this story. This is a text about gratitude, these 10 lepers. Sure, it puts the, the power of God on display. And sure, we can learn all kinds of things, but it's a text about gratitude. And it comes on the heels of a text about entitlement. And that comes on the heels of a text about forgiveness. And I started asking myself the question, am I carrying things that I haven't forgiven for because I'm entitled, because I'm not grateful? And maybe just maybe gratitude is not this passive thing that I feel when I get somewhere. Maybe gratitude is actually a weapon. And maybe gratitude is actually the thing that I feel like I'm carrying this weight and I've been trying to kill this tree of like unforgiveness. And it's actually gratitude that is chopping at the roots of that thing. Or I've tried to, I've tried to like knock the fruit off of the tree. I've tried to poison it. But what if gratitude is not this passive thing that happens at the end? What if an active life of gratitude is like an ax chopping at the tree of that unforgiveness and that entitlement that is at work in my life? If you couldn't tell, I'm a little bit intense and I like active things. So the Holy Spirit is like, hey, check out Jesus is pretty smart because he's God and he told these stories in this order on purpose. Forgiveness, the reason you don't forgive is because you're entitled and the reason you're entitled is because you don't have any gratitude. And I was like, stop it. <laughs> don't do that. Gratitude felt like something that I would have once I got to my preferred outcome. But check this in the text. Jesus on the way, this is 1711, Jesus on his way to Jerusalem was passing between Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered a village, he was met by 10 lepers. People who were, who, they, they were standing at a distance because that was, that was the law. You had to stand at a distance. It wasn't legal for you to be around people as a leper. And so they had leper colonies and they would be outside. So just walking into this village and there's these 10 lepers who are crying out. To, they lifted up their voices saying, Jesus, master, have mercy on us. Verse 13, that was verse 13. Verse 14 says, when he saw them, he said to them, go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. Okay, a couple things about gratitude that we see in this guy's work. And here's what I've had to learn and, de and determine in my mind, is that gratitude is a decision, not a feeling. Yeah. I'm gonna tell you again, gratitude is a decision, not a feeling. Yeah. Sometimes I feel grateful and I'm, grat and I'm grateful for that. <laughs> but living a life of gratitude is a decision. Yeah. I have decided because of the work of God in my life, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be grateful and I'm gonna find something. 
in, in, in a culture that super elevates finding things to be angry at. It's like a badge of honor. Whoever's the angriest person in the room is like the most virtuous person in our culture right now. Whoever knows the most things to be angry about is the best person. Cynicism comes naturally, but to decide I'm gonna live a life of gratitude, I'm swinging the ax. So I'm, I'm, I'm gonna decide. It's, verse 14 says, as they went, they were cleansed. And then one of them, Here's another reason that I determined that, that I, I wasn't feeling grateful because why would I be grateful for something that I did? Hang on. Jesus said, go present yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. I realized that I wasn't grateful because it was like, wait a second, I am the one who is doing the deep work of forgiveness. Why would I be thankful to God for that? I am the one who finally disciplined myself and my finances. Why would I be grateful to God for that? I am the one who built this business. Why would I be grateful to God for that? You know what? Gratitude in the New Testament is always tied to grace. The Greek word charis, grace. Gratitude was always a response to a work of grace in your life. And this is so key. For those of you who maybe don't tend to naturally gravitate toward gratitude, gratitude is a work of grace. If you don't know what grace is, grace is something that Jesus gives to you when you don't deserve it. And so the, the, the cross is, is an expression of his grace. The forgiveness of sins is an expression of his grace. That long before I chose him, he went to the cross and he freely saved me. Salvation is a free gift of grace by faith. And so yes, maybe I was the one who took the step to work on my marriage, but it was his word that told me to do it in the first place. That every step on that journey, says as they went, they were cleansed. That every step is a step of grace. Every step is a work of grace. And when we forget this, when I forget that every step that I take is a step of grace, empowered by the Holy Spirit, I start to get a little bit entitled that I built that, I did that, I fought for that, I got free of that, and I forget to be grateful. So you know what, I'm grateful. And you are right, you worked really hard to get to the place where you are. But every step was a work of grace. Scripture tells us that he is ordering the steps of the righteous. And what helps me fight that entitlement that allows me to forgive and to lay aside the weight. That's what Hebrews says, lay aside every weight that so easily besets you. That when I remember that every step I'm taking, yes, you're talented. Yes, you're smart. Yes, maybe you're in a better place than you've been. You're not quite where you want to be yet. But you're further along in your health. You're further along in your finances. You're further along. Insert area here. Yes, you're working hard. But my friend, please do not forget that every step is a work of grace. And outside of the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, empowering those steps, you're just like a bad day away from deciding to go back. And the Holy Spirit was reminding me, Josh, I'm so, I'm so, it's awesome how strong you are and driven. Don't forget that I made you that way. And don't forget that faith is just responding on the word that I spoke. I'm the one who said that in the first place. I'm the one who put that business in your heart. I'm the one who was working in your spouse's heart when you couldn't do enough. And so yeah, you fought and you worked and you got better, but every step is a work of grace. And when I remember that every step, gratitude in the New Testament is most often, nearly every time, it is tied to the idea of grace. I can remember to be grateful. Because yes, I'm, I'm the one who took the step, but that was a step of grace. We're 
going to celebrate here in a second. You have so much to be grateful for. Maybe this is the one that's going to help you most. Verse 15, one of them, when he saw that he was healed, he turned back. Somebody say, turn back. Maybe this is the one that helps you the most. I don't tend toward gratitude because I'm always moving forward. The pace of my life, I'm always on, my personality, I'm always on to the next thing. Ah, cool, God came through. What's next? What's next? What's next? It's probably exhausting to work for me. What's next? What's next? What's next? Can you say thank you? Yeah, thanks. What's next? But here's what gratitude requires. And here's why maybe we don't tend to it because our lives are so fast paced. Gratitude requires that you stop and turn around. And I'm not so great at pausing. I'm not so great at stopping. And for somebody who's driven and forward looking, it's hard. It, it, sometimes it feels like you're abandoning your post to turn and pause and look back. So all 10 of them, Jesus heals them. And then all 10 of them have things to do. They do. Can you imagine? You've been living in a leper colony. Now you're healed. What are you gonna do? I'm going to Target, dog. I've been at Target in years. I don't have to have Chipotle delivered to my house. I can go, I'm going to Chipotle. I got stuff to do. And how quickly we can forget the miracles that God is working in our life because we didn't turn back. This is why it's another reason why it's so important to journal through what you're reading and what you're praying because you can turn back and you can see what it was like when you were praying. Because where you're at right now, we have revisionist memory and it, it feels like it's always been like this and it hasn't. You haven't always been this mentally stable. Remember when you were praying and crying out to God for stability and then God was so faithful and God elevated and God healed and God saved and now you got a testimony, but you forgot because you haven't looked back in a second. And so I often don't, don't operate in gratitude because I, I make the mistake of thinking that 36 year old Josh, this snapshot of my life and that it's always been like this. I haven't always been this healthy. I haven't always been like this. I haven't always been this patient. And maybe, maybe this gratitude that is chopping at, at that tree of, of the weight in your life Maybe all it takes is for you to just stop and turn around for a second. Yes, I got to move forward. Yes, there are things that are requiring my attention. But God, I'm going to stop and I'm going to examine my life for how you have been moving and I'm going to praise you. One of them, when he saw that he was healed, just one of them, turned back praising God with a loud voice. You know why we're gonna sing when we're about to give? Because we're gonna praise God with a loud voice. He fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. We're gonna sing echoes. I'm getting my cardio up right now, getting the blood flowing. And Jesus answered, we're not 10 cleansed. Where are the nine? I do not want that to be said of my life, that, I, that Jesus was moving and he healed me and he set me free. And I was like, okay, thanks God. And I was on to the next thing. I got my squeaky shoes on today. So it feels like I'm moving. That was a total accident. That, that we would be the kind of people that we would, we would have the wherewithal to stop. We would be in the rhythm of stopping. We'd be in the habit of stopping and examining and seeing how God was moving so that I didn't start to live an entitled life because my testimony and where I'm at right now, it wasn't always this way. Why am I grateful? Why do I live a life of gratitude? Because I have a testimony. You live a life of gratitude because you have a testimony. You know where you should be. Joe, you better get out and help me with this. I'm about to jump off this stage. You know where you should be. This is why gratitude is important. It glorifies God. It testifies to his goodness. It builds your faith for the future. Jesus says, was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? 
And then here's what Jesus says, rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. Wait a second, wasn't he already healed? What do you mean made you well? There's a deeper work now going on in this guy's life. It's not just an outside thing. These are different words. He says healed, he says cleansed. Well is not the same thing. So it started as something that I can look at and I can point to. I, I was not well and now I'm well. When I turn and I'm grateful, it opens my heart for the deeper work of the gospel. Not just something not just like some outside exterior thing where it was like, man, this is awesome, how cool is this? But that gratitude is opening my heart for God to work deeper. Rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. And you know what we want in this church? And I pray that every church that, that is preaching the gospel, what we want is not just some outward signs. We want the real deep work of the gospel. And him turning in gratitude is, is what opened this up to. So, okay, so maybe you're waiting for some preferred outcome. Please don't wait for a preferred outcome to be grateful. Have gratitude right now, every step of the way. Every step is a step of grace. As we're singing, Jesus, light of heaven. As we're singing this song and we have reflected, you have reflected, you have taken time. You've prayed over this. God, what is it that you want me to give? If you're here for the first time, here's what we're gonna do. We gave everybody a card. Some of you gave online. Some of you were given with cash, check, Many of you gave online. You can give genesisspokane.com slash give. We're gonna sing this song and we are, gonna, we are gonna praise God for what he has done. We're gonna turn back and we're gonna look. The sleeping world awaken. There's a new day on the rise. Let a sleeping world, what, what if one of the, the, the most powerful apologetics for the work of God in your life is that you are grateful in a cynical world? is that you were light. When everybody's telling you, be heavy, be heavy, be heavy, but you were light, that you were bright, that you walked around with RGF, that you're walking in beaming with the joy of the Lord. So we're gonna be grateful. We're gonna decide. Gratefulness, gratitude is a decision. For some of you, you just naturally gravitate toward gratitude. Praise the Lord, thank you. Keep showing us the way. For the rest of us, we decide. So I'm gonna pray over us. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna pray over us and then we're gonna praise God. God has been so faithful. Why gratitude? Because you have a testimony and somebody is coming. Somebody else is coming. And we're making room for their testimonies. We're making room for God to meet those, those kids personally and powerfully. That's my prayer of what God would do through me, and, through me and my wife, what he would do through that offering is that he would meet them personally and powerfully. He would meet them in their curiosity and their wonder and reveal himself to them personally and powerfully. That's my prayer. In case you were looking for something to write down, that's what I'm praying. Let a sleeping world awaken. There's a new day on the rise. I can't wait to sing that lyric. It's like halfway through the song, but it's already in me. God, we are grateful to you. Help us, Holy Spirit. Help us, Holy Spirit, to see that this is a work of grace. Let this not be something in us that we just like work up on the exterior, but as we really reflect, as we take time to cast aside all of the easy stuff that it seems like it's easy to point out what's wrong, but as we get eyes of gratitude to say, God, here's how you have moved in my life this year. That out of an overflow of gratitude that we would, we would sing your praises. We would glorify you. We would ascribe goodness to you. And this lifestyle of gratitude would keep you on the throne in our hearts. In Jesus' name, God, we pray for everybody who's sowing that you would multiply this into our mission partners, Bite to Go, World Compassion, Team Church, Leading Second, all of, all of our partnerships, all of the missionaries, Convoy of Hope. God, that you would multiply what your people are about to give and it would do much more than it could ever do on its own. We glorify you and we are grateful. We are grateful. We are grateful for how you have worked and how you will continue to move in us. In Jesus' name. Everybody said, amen. Let's stand.